She's the mental piece of the family Always strong for all to see Raising three kids and grandma's fading Keeping up with all their needs Angus Gill, we spoke to him not long ago about some new music out, an album called The Scrapbook, and he's got a brand new single. Angus, last time we caught up, you were pretty excited about this single upcoming because of the work you've done with Jim Lauderdale, so it must be great that it's actually out hitting the airways. It sure is, Darren. It's brilliant because this song was actually the catalyst for The Scrapbook. I've always admired traditional bluegrass music. I've always been a fan. There's just something about the rapid tempos, the kind of melancholy lyric that accompanies this quite lively, happy kind of music. There's something that's always appealed to me about that. And so I wanted to do a bluegrass album, but I didn't realise it was going to be so soon. I come across Whittling Away, Jim Lauderdale and I wrote it about maybe two or three years ago, prior to COVID. I was kind of taking stock of my songs last year and I I come across it and kind of in the light of what we've all been going through with the pandemic, it really struck a chord with me and I thought, oh, look, I'd love to do something with this. I charted it out and started putting a track together in my studio and then I emailed Jim and said, hey, you know, would you be keen to do this as a duet? It's, It's kind of got that broken narrative structure that really lends itself to two people singing the song. He was really keen and sent through the parts, I think, like a week later. And I thought, all right, I've got a song now. What the hell am I going to do with it? Shortly after that, I had this other song called Samson, which I was going to track for a kind of alt country project. And then I started playing it and playing it. And I thought, actually, this is not an alt country song. It's a bluegrass song. You know, there's bluegrass stylings in the way I'm kind of singing it. And I was so playing it on the banjos. That kind of adds an extra bluegrass element to it. And I thought, okay, I've got two songs. What am I going to do? And then I come across the song, The Scrapbook, that I wrote several years ago too. And it was inspired by True Story. And come across these other songs. And I'm like, that'll work well as a bluegrass song too. And I was arranging some traditional country songs that I had written because I write so many songs I can't keep up with it I'm always writing for other artists projects so we wrote a few more songs and we had a whole album and so we tracked it remotely pretty much January February of this year so you've sat down written the song yeah yeah not yet maybe later is there something that was inspiring you at the time that you reckon you can put your finger on I'm 23 but I've got my fingers in so many different pies and I love writing songs that are in a a different genre to what I'm normally comfortable with. There's this kind of saying, when you write with someone else, the song is in the room. And so I'm always tuned into the things that people say and quite often I'll I'll pull someone up and go, hey, you know what you just said then? We should write that. And they go, oh, didn't think of it. But that was kind of what we were saying. And there's other times where we'll be talking about ham and cheese toasties. And all of a sudden, that will seep its way into a song. And it's just random conversation points that sometimes can filter through or act as a metaphor in the actual song. And so moments like that are cool. And sometimes it's just walk into a writing room and there's a bluegrass song that needs to be written. And because it's quite a specific genre, I put those songs in a pile and gone, look, I, I can't throw them if I'm doing an old country album or a comedy album or whatever the hell I'm doing, you can't kind of just throw a bluegrass song on there because it can seem out of place. I put them in a pile so if I know a bluegrass artist that needs songs for an album, I've got a few options. I always try and organise my songs so that I can have them on hand if an artist is after a particular thing or if I'm after a particular song. So yeah, I've probably written about 80 songs this year and the year's not even over. So it's part of what's kept me sane during COVID, but it's also what I have to do. You know, I wake up every day and, and I either write on my own or with someone else. I have to do it. When you go through the track listing here, folks, you'll see some of the names that just appear. Of course, Jim Lauderdale, Charles Easton, uh, Jerry Sally. What do you think the reaction is that when they see this young 23-year-old coming in and sitting down and writing with them? Do you think it gives them a new lease of inspiration? 
I think older mines and young pines are a really good pairing. A lot of my good friends are in their early to late 70s, and even though they talk about this generation gap, I don't think there is. I've got a good friend in his early 70s that I'm producing an album for at the moment, and we often have a chat every day on the phone and talk about all kinds of music that we've been taking in and books we've been reading and all sorts of things. So I think there's this kind of pairing with people like Jerry Sally and Jim Lauderdale and a, another friend of mine, Bill White, who I write with all the time. It's, it, it's almost like we get on like there's no gap in between at all. I'm pretty sure that the fact that I get along with all these people is just awesome. You know? I imagine it's all the socials and your website, Angus. Yes, it is. And I, I just want to say a big thank you to you guys for all of the support over the years. And you're doing wonderful things for artists all the time with CRS, with your radio charts, with your show, and we, we all really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you giving up your time to come on and talk to the fans. They love to hear how the songs came about, how the story's behind it. It's a lot of fun that we do this, and we might get on and play some music now featuring Jim Lauderdale. This is Angus Gill and Whittling Away, and we look forward to catching up real soon. We're whittling away Whittling away The nerves are getting Nerves are getting frayed It's like they got a boulder Sitting on his shoulder 